Now let's talk about the intrinsic muscles of the palm. These are 20 in number. Although it looks like a lot of muscles, but if we try to study them in groups, it gets easy. So the first group is the thenar eminence. If this is our palm, we have a prominence on the lateral side called the thenar eminence and a prominence on the medial side called the hypothenar eminence. So what are the muscles that are making up these eminences? The thenar eminence is formed by three muscles, the abductor, the flexor, and the opponents of the thumb. In anatomical terms, the thumb is known as the pollicis, P-O-L-L-I-C-S. The pollicis, hence abductor, pollicis, and since these are all small muscles, brevis, the flexor, pollicis, brevis, and finally the opponents, pollicis. Now let's talk about the muscles of the hypothenar eminence. These are the four muscles. The first is the palmaris brevis. And apart from this are the three abductor, flexor and opponents similar to the pollicis. Since this digit in anatomical terms is known as the digiti minimi, hence it's abductor digiti minimi, flexor digiti minimi, and finally opponents digiti minimi. Now what is opponents? Opponents is basically opposition that a muscle used for the opposition movement. What is the opposition movement? This is the opposition movement of the thumb and this is the opposition movement of the little finger. These are about seven muscles. Apart from these, there are four lumbrical muscles, the lumbricals. Apart from the lumbricals, there are eight interosci muscles. These are four dorsals or the four dorsal interosci and the three or four palmar interosci muscles. So now we have, let's go through this again, thenar muscles were three. Then we had the hypothenar muscles. These were four in number. Then we had the lumbricals. These were four in number. And then we had the inter osci muscles. These were eight. And finally, we have some extra muscles. One of them is the adductor of the thumb. Since the thumb does not have an inter osci muscle and inter osci muscles are responsible for the adduction, the thumb has to have a separate adductor muscle known as the adductor pollicis muscle. So if we count these, this is eight plus eight, which is 16 plus three and one is 20. Now let's talk about these muscles in more depth with their origin insertion and the layering. So let's start with the first layer or let's say the most superficial layer of your palm, meaning the one that is lying the most closest to the skin. So the first layer includes the two AFs. Which ones are the two AFs? A for abductor and F for flexors. Abductor digiti minimi and the abductor pollicis, the flexor digiti minimi and the flexor pollicis. Let's talk about these and they are forming the first layer. This is very important in terms of your question point of view. So these are forming the first layer of the palm. So let's talk about their origin and insertion. The first, which is abductor pollicis, this means pollicis meaning thumb and abductor meaning abducting. The so the abductor pollicis brevis is arising from the scaphoid and trapezium along with the flexor retinaculum, while the flexor pollicis brevis is arising yet again from the flexor retinaculum, some trapezoid and capitate bones as well. And these two are going to insert in the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb or the first digit. Then we have the abductor and flexor digiti minimi. These two muscles basically begin, abductor digiti minimi starts from the pisiform bone, while the flexor digiti minimi is originating from the flexor retinaculum. These two yet again are inserting in the proximal phalanx of the little finger or the digiti minimi finger. 
Now let's talk about the second layer. The second layer is simple. The second layer is formed by the four lumbrical muscles. So let's look at them. After removing the first layer, then we have the next most superficial layer. These are the lumbrical muscles. These are the lumbrical muscles and the origin of the lumbrical muscles are the tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. These are the tendons and these are the muscles, the lumbricals. The first two are, as you can see, the first two lumbricals are arising from these tendons, while the final two are arising from the more medial tendons. The lumbrical insertion is basically via extensor expansion. These go here and via the, they go into the dorsum of the fingers via extensor expansion and get inserted behind in the digits from two to five, two, three, four, five. And the action of lumbrical muscle is basically flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint and extension at the interphalangeal joint of the two, three, four, five digits, not including the thumb. Lumbricals don't have action on the thumb. Let's talk about the third layer. The third layer is formed by the o, OA muscles. So, OA meaning the two opponents and the one adductor of the thumb. The opponents pollicis and the opponents digiti minimi and finally the adductor pollicis. Let's talk about their origins and insertion. The opponents pollicis and digiti minimi both arise from the flexor retinaculum, easy. The opponents are being inserted into the metacarpal bones as there is, when there is the movement of opposition, there is rotatory movement in the metacarpal bones. Hence, these have to be inserted in the metacarpal bones so that they can cause its rotation to cause the opposition movement. So, the opponents pollicis is inserted into the first metacarpal while the opponents digiti minimi is inserted into the fifth metacarpal and finally the adductor has two heads so in the third layer we'll take off the second layer muscles these are the lumbricals we take them off and we can see the third layer muscles this is basically the adductor pollicis now this muscle has two heads the oblique and the transverse head the oblique head basically arises from the bases of the two, three metacarpal bones, the bases of the two and three metacarpal bones and the transverse head is arising from the shaft of the third metacarpal bone. And since adduction is a movement that, that occurs like so, hence it is necessary the muscle comes from this side or this side and it goes to attach in the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Now we have discussed the third layer and we discussed the origin insertion action. Now let's talk about the fourth and final layer. So if I remove all of these muscles, we will see our final, the most deepest layer that has the muscles called the interosci muscles. All eight interosci muscles. These are the dorsal and palmar. Their origins the dorsal and the palmar both have origins from the metacarpal bones and their insertion is yet again from via extensor expansion into the dorsum of the uh, second, third, fourth, fifth digit. Now, what is the action of these muscles? The dorsal interosci are dab, so they, call, they carry out abduction of the digits. And the palmar interosci, they are pad, they carry out the adduction at the digits. Finally, let's talk about the nerve supply of all of these muscles. The nerve supply is basically TL12. The TL and 1 and 2 are the only ones that are supplied by median nerve. And what are these muscles? The muscles of the thenar eminence, the lumbricals 1 and 2. These are supplied by median nerve. Apart from this, all muscles of the hand are supplied by the ulnar nerve, more specifically the deep branch of ulnar nerve supplying all the muscles except for palmaris brevis which is being supplied by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve.
So that is all about the intrinsic muscles of the hand along with their origin, insertion, nerve supply and action. Thank you so much for watching.